and the Dina Queen, you know. What's up everyone? Today is day one of Romanticon. I think I woke up about an hour ago, but I'm just now kind of like getting ready to sit down and read a little bit. I am taking a really long walk later, but I'm taking it with, um, I think my husband's gonna go along and then my like boss, well, she's my friend too, but she is my boss. Um, there are next door neighbors. We are gonna take a really long walk into town. So I won't be able to like be listening to anything on the way cause I'll be talking with her. But then I hope that I can just get a lot of reading done later this afternoon. This is my really big TBR. I'm gonna go through some of them right now because I did add a couple that weren't a part of my original TBR. Um, and then I'm gonna pick what I'm going to read first. So for my TBR, these are two books that weren't part of my original TBR. I am actually currently reading one of them and I didn't get to finish in time before Romance-a-thon. So it is a romance book, so I feel like I could put it in for this week. And then the other one is a book that I had on hold at the library and it came in. So I, I kind of want to read it. So we have Tears of Tess um, by Peppa Winters. I feel like this is super zoomed in. It was. <laughs> Tears of Tess by Pepper Winters. And this is definitely, I could count this as a lot of different things because it is an indie romance. It is a new to me romance author. It's also out of my comfort zone because it's like a very dark, like this girl gets kidnapped and her captor, I guess, is going to like abuse her and stuff. I'm not exactly sure, um, but I am about that far into it. And so I, I could actually continue reading that and it's actually been pretty good. So I have been liking it. Then I have Christina Lauren's The Soulmate Equation. This is going to be the last time I try out a Christina Lauren. If I don't like this book, I, I'm not picking up a Christina Lauren ever again because I just, I just never really love their books. There's only one that I actually liked and it was The Unhoneymooners, which I read two romance-a-thons ago. Um, but still, it wasn't a five-star read for me. I don't know, I'm gonna try this out because the DNA thing, I did really like the one by John Mars and it has that same, you know, similar kind of concept. I mean, if I like it, then maybe I'll keep going with Christina Lauren. If I don't like it, it's gonna be my last Christina Lauren book. Then my other um, quick, you know, TBR that I've talked about before is Crazy Stupid Bromance, Never Never by Colleen Hoover, The Guy on the Right by Kate Stewart, On the Rocks by Candy Steiner, The Trouble with Hating, The Trouble with Hating You by Sajni Patel, The Last Goodbye by Fiona Lucas, and The Buddy Read Someday Someday by Emma Scott. So I actually think today. I think I want to just go ahead and start with The Last Goodbye. I, I think, I don't know. I think I'm gonna have to sit here and really think about it because I also would love to read The Guy on the Right. I think that these are two of like the books that I'm just very much interested in to, to start out with. Um, and then all the other ones is like, I'll, you know, I'll figure out what mood I'm in to read them. I don't know, I gotta think about it. I'll come back in a second. Always goes, no 
on a walk with my boss and everything and I'll tell you guys about that later but I picked up these flowers from a local friend of mine for my brother his girlfriend it's her birthday today and my brother is like in the military he's training right now so he's away so he had given us something we wrapped it up Alvin actually did the job wrapping it so I'm actually here I'm waiting for his girlfriend to give her the birthday present and the beautiful flowers, which they are so gorgeous. Oh my gosh. So yes, I will update you guys in a bit. I just wanted to show you guys these before I handed them off. Okay, now that I'm back home and like done driving, I'll give you a little update. Um, so this morning I went on a long walk to town with my boss and that was really, really fun because we got coffee, we stopped by the post office and I got in all my steps for the day. Uh, I ended up doing 11,000, like over 11,000 steps. So that's why I love doing like the walk to town. I wanna do that a couple times this week. And then after that, made breakfast. By that time it was definitely bright lunch and then I had to get the pick up the flowers the local flowers for my brother's girlfriend and just drop them off to her um she really really loved them I sent my brother like a little Marco Polo video of her like seeing the flowers for the first time um she's just like such a sweetheart too so got all of that done I did listen I think I'm at like 11 or 12 percent I decided to read the last goodbye yeah the last goodbye by by Fiona Lucas. Um, so the audiobook, it does say I have 10 hours and nine minutes left, but I also have the physical copy. I had the ARC and the ARC says that it came out June 21st, which it's not even the 21st yet, um, but it must have come out early because the audiobook was available on Scribd. So it says the release was June 8th. So I guess that it got bumped up and I didn't realize it, but this book is now out. You don't have to wait for it, but this one is about um it's a married couple and the husband dies actually he was like walking to the store it actually kind of reminds me of um the taylor jenkins read book forever interrupted i think is what it's called um because that also the husband dies while he's walking to the store so this guy was like walking to the store to go get like a bottle of wine and a drunk driver hits him and he dies and that was like two years previously it's now been two years and a certain amount of months and our main character is still like kind of mourning him and trying to get over him and it's new year's eve so it's like a new year and um her like friends are trying to set her up up with people but she just like she's just not ready yet and I really like so far how it's talking about like the grief and what that feels like because I think that is a really important topic to talk about a lot of people don't want to you know they don't want to read sad books so they don't want to read things with that type of material but I love sad emotional books so this has been right up my alley so far um, our main character does call her husband's phone like I think his name is Spencer I forget what our main character's name is the book is inside um, but she calls Spencer's phone because she likes listening to his voice on the voicemail, which I just think is such a cute little touch because I would totally do the same thing. Like whatever remnants you have of that person, I feel like you would just, you would want to be, yeah, like listening to if their voice is on something or if you have a video of them or, you know, smell their shirt, whatever it is. And so I really like that part. Uh, but she calls and someone else answers the phone. And where I'm at right now, like she, she doesn't know who it is. Like they're in her mind, like she's like, like it can't be Spencer but like was I just imagining it like am I hoping it's Spencer like it's not him um so I'm at the point where like obviously she doesn't know who it is um but that's where I've stopped so far I'm actually gonna go inside and I'm gonna read a little bit I decided guys oh my gosh okay so I haven't played Animal Crossing since December oh my gosh my neighbor is like looking at me because they're like why are you in your car talking to yourself like in your driveway Sorry, I'm, I'm a weirdo. Um, but anyway, so Animal Crossing, haven't played since December. And I decided, I decided yesterday because I, I hopped on yesterday as like the first time I've been back since December. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna reset my whole island. So Jackie here, I don't know why. I just, I just feel like since I haven't played for so long, 
I'm still in the middle of like projects on my island and I have no clue where I was going with them. I don't remember and it takes so long to like go backwards and change up what you're doing. So I'm just gonna flatten my whole island. Most of my villagers I don't even like anyway because I didn't really pay attention to like getting villagers I like. So I'm gonna start brand new, start with a new island and I think I'm gonna do that today while I listen to this audiobook. I did end up like selling all my stuff, getting a bunch of my money out, you know, changing my Nook Miles and Nook tickets. And I did save some of my favorite items. I went and took them to one of my friend's islands and then I'll just go back and get them later, which was very smart actually. I, I was watching YouTube videos about it. So I'm glad that I didn't just, you know, like lose everything, but I'm gonna actually press the reset button today. And then I'm going to work on all the brand new stages of a new island. So that's gonna be exciting. I'm gonna go inside, get a cup of coffee, and relax and play Animal Crossing and listen to this book. So hopefully you guys have been having a good first day of Romance-a-thon so far and I will update you guys in a bit. swapped for a copy of it. I said, I think I might need scissors or a knife. Oh, and I think the other one's Caraval. Yeah. So we've got Malibu Rising, not Book of the Month copy, in case I do end up liking it. I don't collect Book of the Month. <laughs> Horrible. This is actually the only like fantasy book that I actually really, really liked, and so I got it for my favorite shelf. My friend Logan actually sent it to me, so thank you for sending me this. This on my favorite shelf. This is on my TBR shelf. <sighs> All right, it is almost eight o'clock. I think it's like 7.45, right on the dot. Um, anyway, so I am 60% the last goodbye and I am not loving it, unfortunately. Um, I have read Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins Reid, which is about like the husband dying, but they've only been married for a little while. And there are so many similarities in this book and i didn't love like forever interrupted by taylor jenkins reed i also dnf'd um what's the i don't i forget the whole title but like lydia bird the two lives of lydia bird and this book is like a mixture of both of those so <laughs> unfortunately i didn't realize that like like i knew that the husband was going to die like spencer was going to die but he dies in almost the exact same way that the husband died in Forever Interrupted and that's not a spoiler like literally in both of the books the synopsis says that the husband is dying <laughs> or is dead um but like to make it that similar I feel like is a little ridiculous I don't know it's just weird to me um and then both of these books Forever Interrupted and um the one that I'm reading The Last Goodbye have toxic mother-in-laws and so i just see this like really big rep repetition in these um i do think that like the talk about grief and mental illness and all of those topics are very important and i think like i like those parts in the book um i just find that it's getting very long which is also what i thought about with one last stop um which you guys don't even really know my review for that yet because the podcast has not come out yet for that it comes out on june 21st it's reminding me a lot of that i feel like there are like it's a lot of dialogue a large portion of the book is about brody um and anna 
kind of like creating a friendship and kind of like coming together within their grief um, because they both have lost their significant others. Um, and so, yes, I appreciate that storyline. I just feel like it could have been done a lot better. It could have been faster. And I obviously know that like when you lose somebody, like it's not going to be fast for you to like get over it and you know move on with your life but i think in book form it needs to be sped up a bit especially since anna it's already been over two years since anna has lost her husband and i just feel like what they're talking about is the same stuff over and over again um so so far those are like my thoughts about the book and i i like the thing is is like i feel like i know that a lot of people are going to like this book because of it being told just like so many other like contemporary women's fiction books. I don't really think that this is a romance book. I don't think it should be categorized, categorized like that, um, which has been my argument for so many books I've been reading recently, like One Last Stop, this one, The Last Goodbye, Just Last Night by Varee McFarlane. They're being categorized and marketed as romance books, but they're honestly more like friendship dynamic, um, women's fiction, contemporary reads. And I am not a t like, I don't know why, but that genre just doesn't do anything for me. Um, and so I think that's why I keep having a really hard time with these books because I'm going into them thinking that they're gonna be something else and they're not. I guess I wish that I would see more of like Anna and her husband Spencer's relationship because I'm not really getting as much of that like grief and sadness out of it as I would if we would have really saw them as a couple beforehand. Yeah, that's the reason why. I think like from what I remember with like Taylor Jenkins reads like when she does her one true loves or like after I do, I feel like you see more of the relationship between the person. So that way when they are pulled apart or there is something that happens, I feel like you are more prone to feel those emotions. And I feel like this book is not doing that, unfortunately. So yeah, it's very sad because the cover of this is absolutely beautiful, but I didn't want to DNF this one because the publisher sent it to me and I would feel really bad about that. I feel like I owe it to them to finish this book, um, but then all the other books, like if I am not feeling them, if I feel like it's gonna be like below a three star, then I might DNF and move on to something else. We'll see. I am the DNF queen, you know. I'm about to start the reading sprints. I'm doing the reading sprints tonight. Um, and so I need to figure out what page I'm on in this book because I was listening to the audiobook and I redid my Animal Crossing Island and it's it's turning out really good. I got um, two really great characters. I got Ursula and Bam and I had Ursula on my island before and I really really liked her. She was one of my favorites. I also had Megan and Megan was my favorite but all the other people I did not like. Um, so I got Ursula again which I was so happy about. Um, I picked an island shape that I really liked. I had to like restarted the game like five times before I found the island I wanted and then Bam is super cute. He's a little blue like deer looking thing but yeah so that's going really well i was time traveling a bit to like speed up the whole beginning process show but oh my gosh like I was reading my book and I was super into my book and Gwen had to call me to let me know that there was this creep in the live show like I mean not not like a face or a person but like in the comments like commenting nasty sex things about my feet the whole time like not the whole time I was reading but I think like for a good I don't know like 10 minutes or so um, so yeah, Gwen called me and I had my headphones on because I was like listening to my book and so I heard like I heard the ringing um, and then that's when I realized that like people had been messaging me and like trying to tell me about this creep which thankfully I blocked but like that is so crazy like to think that like all I'm doing is literally sitting on this bed and reading a book. Ah, uh, so irritating. But anyway, 
I only have actually 60 pages left of my book, um, which I'm super excited about and it actually has gotten better uh, in this last like quarter portion if the whole book would be like this quarter portion I could definitely see myself like really really loving this book um, But I'm gonna finish it and then I'll give you guys my full update because I just want to see how the ending is and that's really gonna affect my rating um, I really don't know what I'm reading this book yet. So I'll see you guys very soon I'm gonna finish reading this and play a little Animal Crossing and then I will update you guys before bed after this book is done. Oh, okay, you guys. Is this thing done again? Anyway, so I finished The Last Goodbye. Um, it's, it just, it. I, I see how this book could work really well for a lot of people. I definitely think I will have to think on my initial like rating and review, but it's between a two and a three star for me. Um, there was a portion of the book that I like I liked that I did kind of like get really into that I was like emotional for that was part of like the last like quarter of the book sorry the light keeps being really weird but for the majority of this book I just felt that it was too long if you want slow burn romance like this is slow burn and there's not even that much romance in it so like I felt like it was just too slow burn very realistic though like i can definitely see if you had lost your husband like how long it would kind of take you to grieve over it how even if you tried to date people how hard it would be and so i do think that this book did a really good job on depicting that like depicting the grief that you go through the struggles of dating after you're you like you lose like a spouse it just i felt like it should have been sped up and i just felt like there was too much dialogue especially between anna and brody i feel like okay some of the things that i had or that i wish could have been changed i wish that we got to see Anna and Spencer's relationship or, or like flashbacks of it or something before he died because I didn't feel like I was, like I didn't really care as much about like the grief that Anna had because it was a little hard for me to just understand how great of a relationship they had before he had died. But I do wish that that would have been in there. And then involving like Anna and Brody, I feel like I didn't really get to know Brody as a character very much. So I wasn't really rooting for him or, you know, thinking that he would be a good substitute as like a new husband for Anna. I also, I, I just think that that the whole book, it was mostly Anna and Brody's like back and forth chatting and i just don't think i like that very much in books this also was very much like forever interrupted i also feel like it kind of replicates a little bit of ugly love from colleen hoover so if you like any of the books that i talked about then definitely pick this up because i think that you would like all of that i just think that i'm so like straight to the point that books that have a lot of different characters and they want you to fall in love with the characters and there's a lot of dialogue because they want you to think it's funny and all that I, I just don't think that those are for me which is why i keep having a problem every time i pick one up i'm gonna settle between like yeah two or a three star i feel like it deserves more than a two star because it is a problem with like myself as the reader it's not a book problem but i can't give it more than a three star because then of the things that i do think could have been better you know regardless of me being picky but i'm excited that i finished a book by the way like this is out i i forget if i said that or not but this is out it came out june 8th so you can get a copy of it if you are interested i'm really excited for tomorrow morning starting a brand new book i also got so much done on my animal crossing island because i've been like time traveling and stuff i took a break now i'm gonna go to bed thanks for watching i'll see you guys tomorrow Bye bye